You're listening to the Berkshire Football Stories podcast. Hello and welcome to Berkshire Football Stories, where we are in conversation with one half of Berks County's joint management team, Ellis Wood, ahead of their historic day uh, in the FA Cup on Sunday, the 4th of August. Um, Joining myself uh, and Rob Davis, obviously, is Ellis. Ellis, how are you personally feeling about uh, Sunday afternoon? Uh, Yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, Good, really good. Um, Good. I yeah, it's a bit of a kick me moment I think because of the journey of the the project of where we've come from and where it's where we started. You know, I think that's like and I sort of I, I, I'm repeating myself a lot because I hammer it home to our players that were, have been there from the start of that project and also the new ones coming in as to like where me and Simo envisage taking Barks from where we were t- to where we are now um you know it's a it's a really nice place and um you know these are the games that you just my visit my vision and simo's vision when we kicked off with barks was to mm-hmm. manage at step 5 as young managers that we you know we weren't going to get the opportunities um just based on our age i think at the time like that was 6 years ago and i mean i'm 34 now but as a 28 27 year old you know you had i had aspirations to manage i was managing the, the development side or the under 21s at binfield and um you know had had this sort of like vision of managing at step five step four step three and i think at the time i was you know very young naive um have learned a lot over the last five years and the club have been brilliant to me and simo and given us that learning opportunity and we're still we're still learning and we're still we're still enjoying it with these new experiences and it, and an fa cup game you know, on paper, it's a massive experience, right? Like, um, so yeah, we're, it's really exciting, mate. Really exciting. We're we're really looking forward to it. Um, so yeah, it's all good. Absolutely. Can you just give us a background of, of that journey you spoke about? Obviously, you and Lee took over at Barks County when you were still in the Thames Valley Premier League uh, back in 2019-2020 season, which, uh, yeah. as many people know, was voided due to COVID. Just, just give us a brief background of your journey from Step Seven and now to the twenty twenty four twenty five season at Step Five. Uh, wow. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, first season, we when the season was curtailed, we were top of the division um, at Step Seven, Thames Valley Prem. The season Simo had taken over the side the year before that and avoided them relegation um, uh, halfway through the season, and I'd left Eversley had honestly fallen out of love with the game just based on my experience and I needed a little break and I got it I got half a season off and then um he sort of like met with we met down the, the golden retriever in Bracknell and had a chat about Barts County and um you know over a beer and sort of like understanding like what we wanted out of the a project or of our football sort of thing um we then yeah we obviously had that covid ridden season mm-hmm. season after that we finished second and got promoted um and then first year of step six we we sort of learnt new things about ourselves and the squad and you know it wasn't always about total football anymore there was different elements of the game which we needed to afford and learn um and we finished I think we finished about mid-table in that first season but had quite a good FA Vars run um had a good FA Vars run had a good cup run I think we got to the league cup final that year um and sort of like I think that year we sort of picked up where I guess like the joining of the the, the club, like the juniors were coming down to games. Mm-hmm. The juniors, there was a lot of junior uh, fans or club members at the League Cup final. The next season, um, we th- we didn't have a great bars run. We went out in the first round away to Chesterton Hook, I think it was. Yeah. Um, but we were still getting like attendances were growing. Um, and then we finished, yeah, we finished second, uh, the season before this season gone. Um, and then finished in the playoffs this season gone and 
well, you, I imagine you both know the story of us not winning in the playoff final on penalties, and then uh, a week later getting told that we're we're actually going to get promoted anyway. Like it's it's a really weird, and I'm almost a little bit embarrassed by the fact that we've not actually won anything. <laughs> but <laughs> we've been on this like journey of success in that. Um, I don't know if you guys use football web pages at all, but I always try to keep a track of our results and our league position over the years on a graph. Hmm. And if you look at our league position over the last three seasons, we've nine times out of ten and been in the top half of that division. Yeah. Like we've been very fairly consistent, um, and that brings its own pressures um, because obviously people expect you to win every game. And I think our players did, and, and we did at times, like put ourselves under un really unnecessary pressure the last couple of years. Um, to go up, I think was the was the call and was the was the uh, ambition. And um, here we are now at step five. Like last last year's attendances were were brilliant, considering before step six we were one man and a dog around a bit of <laughs> you know a bit of string on a pitch. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And you can tell by, like you said, the finishing positions and the positions you've been in all season uh, in those, especially in the combined counties, Div uh, Division 1, like you said, your first first year finishing ninth uh, and then yeah, finishing it, yeah. second and then third last season. It's it's um, obviously consistent and, and progressing year on year. So personally, I wouldn't feel embarrassed about going up to step five. I think it's a fantastic achievement that <laughs> you've all worked so hard on them and, and it's well deserved with this obviously with coming coming with step five the the fa cup appearance which uh yeah is, is well deserved for yourselves for lee for the players and the club as a whole for for the rise it's taken um well, since you've taken over um at the club so yeah i think everyone connected to football barkshaw supporters of barkshaw football um can be proud of what Barks County have achieved in, in the last few years. Yeah, it's, it's an incredible journey, isn't it? I mean, you've just outlined it there. I mean, it seems almost like a, you've, I say only you've only been there for five seasons, but it almost yeah. seems a lot longer because you've uh, you've achieved so much in there, and you outlined quite a lot of it. And you know, there's lots of firsts there. You were talking yeah. about, you know, first time the club's uh, ever been promoted, first time it's. Played at step six, first FA Vars, first uh, now promotion to step five, and um, and coming up on uh, Saturday a first ever uh, FA Cup game. So, what sort of um, what experience? What from those experiences and those firsts do you think you can uh, draw on when you come to play your first ever FA Cup game on Sunday? We should uh, give it a little bit of a plug as well. You're at home. <laughs> Home to Clevedon on three o'clock on um, Clevedon Town, three o'clock on uh, Sunday. Uh, so, you know, a lot of games happening on Saturday. So if anyone's yeah. got a free afternoon on Sunday, three o'clock. It's actually an to... earlier kickoff. Yeah, it's a one o'clock. Yeah, oh, it's a one o'clock one. Yeah. I'm glad you corrected me then. We'll have to check out <laughs> our, our website. Yeah. But yeah, one o'clock kickoff and uh, you can get down to Ascot to see them, uh, see Barks County play the FA Cup. So what can you... What of the uh, firsts, what experiences there do you think you can draw when you're going into your first ever FA Cup yeah. game? You know, I think, um, I mean, our biggest, I'm mean, talking purely football now, I, I guess our biggest experiences have been in those cup games, you know, like, and I'm not I'm, I'm not just talking about the League Cup or the FA Vars, but the playoffs last year. We learned a lot about being brave and, you know, taking some risks and there's no expectation on our part, like, in these games where we've come from, we on paper look like an underdog and we're okay with that. And I think that's, that's okay. And I think like, my message to certainly to the players on Sunday will be to like, be humble, obviously, but don't have any fear. Like I think, um, you know, we've got a certain way of playing and we want to start that way and try and be brave and um, take risks without the ball and take risks with the ball. You know, I think there's a, you know, there's a, a case of in cup football that, you know, you could say, oh, OK, well, for the first 10 minutes, we'll we'll sit off and see what happens and sort of suss each other out a little bit. But, um, you know, we're going to we're going to give it a bloody good go. You know, I think that's that's for us our our biggest learning experience is that, you know, you're in these cup games um, or in these games that are one off games and anything can happen. So you just got to go for it and, you know, be be who you are, like, you know, play the way you've you want always want to play i think there's been a couple of times over the last 
Yeah, certainly, I think. I, I mean, I'm thinking back to the League Cup game now, where we were a little bit conservative. Um, we'd, yeah, we'd made. I don't know. You know, you can look at a, lo- a number of different things. Selection. You can look at. Um, I don't know, like prep, all that sort of stuff over and over again. I think we'll just sort of play it how it comes. Like um, this week, Simo's given birth or his wife, his, his wife's given birth. <laughs> oh, congratulations. So, so Didn't yeah, know that. That's amazing. To, to baby Jack Simpson. Um, but um, yeah, I guess there's a, you know, we'll do everything we can to prepare as much as we can, you know, like, mm. you know, we'll look at, it's not just the FA Cup, is it? It's, it's the first game of the season. So there's going to be, I don't know, you know, you can have as many friendlies as you want, but they're never as real as a real game. And certainly Saturday we played against Hilltop and we took, we conceded goals that were because of a risk that we wouldn't probably normally take in a league game. Do you know what I mean? So, um, you know, I think you can play as many friendlies as you like, but when you get going in a season, um, I'd almost actually would have preferred us to have played a couple of league games before an FA Cup game, but um, that's just how it is. And I think it's been that way for a long time, hasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. So, um, like I say, you're playing in your first uh, FA Cup game this weekend, first season at Step 5. Uh, give us a, some insight into what that means to the club in general, because you've spoken about this journey coming from uh, Thames Valley League, Step 7, and yeah. you've taken us all there. How has the club changed uh, um, and how has that affected the uh, club uh, or the success you've had? Yeah, I, I think it's. I think it's just continues to bring us closer together. I think, um, you know, we had the club awards day in the summer, um, which happens quite late on. It doesn't happen right at the end of the season. It happens like midway through, um, and you know, we had. I think it was probably ten or twelve first team players there handing out awards and getting involved. And I think the more exposure we get, the more our junior members and our junior member parents sort of like can start you know they feel that affinity to the club a little bit more because there's because it's more seen because we I mean I've said this I think to to you guys and to Tom a couple of times like because we don't have our own ground there's not like there's a hustle and bustling place where everyone goes on a Saturday morning you know like let's say for example you go to Binfield you're gonna have like the junior games on in the morning you're gonna have the soccer school on a Sunday do you know what I mean like they've got that almost like group a place where a group of people will go because we haven't got that yet, we, um, you know, we're, we're kind of, we're using the experiences that we've had over the last five years to sort of bring everyone together. And I mean, I always do a, a plea to parents to, you know, of soccer school kids that I've coached over the last five or six years, because I, I did that for a little bit for the club. Um, you know, in Simo, his, his development team of coaches, you know, coach all the kids. Do you know what I mean? Like there's a, there's a, a real affinity and a, are coming together when these sort of games happen and I hope we can do that again on Sunday you know have a have a nice um contingent of junior members and junior club people at the ground at you know close to Ascot Sun in Hill was where we you know the the team the the junior club sort of merged from mm-hmm. so you know that's the that's always the goal for these sorts of occasions is to try and use it as an occasion to bring everyone together within the club um I'm sorry, I sound really corny, don't I? But that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of the that's kind of how it is. Like, yeah, and that's what the club's about. The club is a community club, and the first team is sort of I don't want to say flagship, but it's it's kind of like uh, you know I'd like to think it think of it as the part you know the the I you know an ideal pathway for a community player that you know yeah. go through grassroots and get yourself into the lower levels of non-league, you know. And I think that's important for development in any club, really, to to for the youth players to see that clear pathway up to the first team. It, I mean, we talk about step five, and obviously that that's a good level of football. But even going uh, kind of down the steps, six, seven. If yeah. you look at the likes of Burfield and their youth section, again, they the goal is to get players through the youth section into the first team. So it sounds like what you've what you've achieved off the field as well as on the field in the in, in the past couple of years is they're kind of going hand in hand. And as I said, the, the success off the field it, it, it definitely helps um kind of the on field when you're getting more support down there that really drives the team forward. Obviously the uh, the financial benefit of that as well. Ha- playing on the Sunday and at Ascot. How do you think that gives you an advantage based on 
Um, I guess the travel um, team's really not used to playing Sunday football. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think played into your head. I, I, maybe I think for us, like, um, I, I mean, it'd be weird for us. We've mm. not done a lot of. We haven't done a one o'clock kickoff for a long time. Um, you know, uh, Sundays we haven't. Def- I mean, we, I've never done a Sunday. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I think um, you can look at it in one or two ways. Like, if the, if it's a reverse fixture and you go away and everyone gets on the bus together, that also is, is a nice experience to have. Do you know what I mean? Like. Um, get you know, Clevedon will probably leave on the bus in the morning or go for breakfast together. Do you see what I mean? Like that, that sort of thing is also good for camaraderie. It's good for the morale of the group. Um, you know, it's there's there's pros and cons. Um, you know, we've we've historically played very well at Ascot. We, we're used to the pitch. Um, you know, it's a it's a nice surface. Like it's the size of it, we're used to. Do you know what I mean? All those sorts of things come in, you know do play in your favour, I think. Um, but we won't really take too much notice of it. It's more just. Can we play the way we want to play? And if we can't, can we can we get a result? You know. Absolutely, yeah. So um, you mentioned your co-manager Lee Simpson um, yeah. a couple of times. Just uh, it's great to hear he's uh, just had uh, the birth of his uh, new uh, child. Did you say son? Yeah, yeah. Second, his second son. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, and the two of you obviously both have young families and things like that. How yeah. do the two of you differ on match days, and how? Um, I want to get a sense of uh, what will it be like on Sunday morning. Well, what have you be cool, here, uh, calm, and level-headed, <laughs> and the other other one bouncing off the walls? Or are you both similar no. in your approach to the uh, uh, the match it's, day? All it's quite back interesting. Back. Like we've worked together for now for these five and a half years. Mm. You know, when football's a game of opinions, and um, you know, I'll have an opinion on a player or a circumstance or whatever, and Simo might have a different one, and you know, sometimes you concede your opinion for the other because you've, I don't know, you can see a, a wider benefit elsewhere. Do you know what I mean? There's lots of different things like that. I think in terms of personality traits, like uh, they're very similar to our, um, I guess, to our strengths and weaknesses as as people and managers and coaches. Like I don't really have an aspiration to be a coach anymore. You know, I coached at a young age, whereas Simo li- lives for the coaching. He, you know, that's his, that's his, job and loves that part of it i'm more i'm more you know my goal is to be a manager or assistant manager at a higher level eventually and um you know look at i i thrive off the administration i thrive off the the communication with the players and trying to you know i i I really enjoy the summer because i enjoy the recruitment process do you know what i mean like there's lots of stuff like that that i enjoy um when it comes to a, a game like a big game like we'll both be as nervous and it's quite interesting when me and Sim, over the last five years, we've had all these big games, whether it be the League Cup final, FA Vars games, um, you know, the, the the playoffs last summer or, or the beginning of the summer. You know, we always say the same thing. Like, we we always, like, shake hands at the beginning of the game and just sort of say, look, we'll just do the best we can. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. um, you know, we, we are obviously different people. Like, Simo's got a completely different temperament to me I've got different temperament to him like I'll get stressed over things that he won't get stressed over and he'll get stressed over things that I don't get stressed over that much do you know what I mean like and that's what I think why we've worked so well together because we've got this uh a little yin and yang (laughs) style of management where we you know we we've both got different traits and um you know strengths and weaknesses that I think I think complement each other a little bit um and yeah, I think we'll go in. Like I say, we'll go into Sunday's game. I'm hoping he's going to be there. I'm sure he will be. I'm sure he'll want, he'll want to be a part of it. Um, but we, you know, he's got to get some permission first. I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I'm, I'm sure he won't miss it for the world. But equally, I fully respect the fact that uh, yeah, he he'll have a week old, which is mental. So yeah, yeah. week old baby. So yeah, it's incredible, really. I mean, um, I think it's fairly widely known that the two of you um, resigned after the. Uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the playoff final defeat um, yeah. and stepped away. It's completely understandable with uh, obviously, you know, you've done such a good job at Barks County. The two of you, as I mentioned earlier, have uh, young families and I'm sure that played into the um, part of your decision. Um, the, I guess the lure of step five football and um, and uh, the FA Cup perhaps was too great and you yeah I, you honestly I, pretty quickly <laughs> my decision yeah well, I mean our decision to to step away was based on look a lot of our players 
and us had done three years at step six. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of our players, had we not stayed uh, or had the group not stayed together, that they would have gone on to play step five football because they're certainly good enough and um, they're capable enough to go and we're capable enough this season to go and, you know, have a go and be be strong. And, you know, I'm not saying we're, you know, we're going to win the thing. It's not, it's not about the winning this year. It's about what can we do? Like, what can we prove? Um, to ourselves and to to the others and to our you know to to the club and to to people like I don't know yourselves really that are in and around the, the local game, um, I you know yeah I think as soon as we resigned there was a lot of interest in the role. Um, we're 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 so lucky to have a, a I call them a, our little board of directors that um, <laughs> were were very much like as soon as the call came in that we'd been promoted we were the first phone call and. Um, that we were said, you know, it was asked, you know, would we reconsider based on this this new piece of news? And I, I in my head straight away, I, I sort of said that I needed a couple of days, but I didn't really have a couple of days and I'd already made my decision on the phone. Like, you know, <laughs> our goal was to go up last year. Um, and uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's happened. But uh, like I say earlier, it's, just, it's just a little bit embarrassing, but we just, yeah, we've got to get on with it. And um yeah, prove ourselves. I guess that's this is what we came here to do. You know, that's why we came to Barts County is to keep stepping forward. Um, I remember, I, I, I'm sure I've quoted this before, but when um, when I was manager manager at Binfield's under 23s, Bob Bacon, who was the chairman at the time, I sort of sort of gesticulated to him. I was like, "How look? How are you still going?" Because he'd done it for such a long time, mm. and he just said, "I remember him turning around to me and saying, like, look, you've just got to make small incremental changes and growth, grow incrementally, slowly over time.'" And eventually you, you sort of get there and it doesn't matter whether it be, you know, through a bit of luck <laughs> that we've just had or, you know, through a, a winning goal or through just, uh, you know, a, a change in the group or, a, you know, a, I mean, silly things. But like this season, we've managed to get a, a good physio in. Do you know what I mean? Like silly things like that that we just haven't had before. And they're not silly, but they're incremental changes and in growth in the squad and in the club and in the, what we're doing to, to sort of take us forward, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm... I, yeah, I think as soon as someone, you know, as soon as John called me and said, we've been promoted, you know what this means, don't you? I'm like, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that was kind of it, really. And you talk about those small incremental changes that, that you've implemented. Obviously, that resonates with the team as well. Like you said, you expected players to leave if you if yourself and, and Simo hadn't come back to the club. You've managed to keep Sid and Luke Hayden, who both scored 26 goals for you last season in uh, combined counties division one how integral will they be this season um with obviously the other players you've retained and brought in to kind of establish yourself at step five so sid's on a dual edge with met police so i and i think like based on the way he's played over the summer i think he'll he'll predominantly be with met police mm -hmm. which is amazing for him like he's yeah. gone from step six to step four and um he scored goals over the summer for them so i think he'll he'll probably be with met um luke's coming back from a a horrific ankle leg break um, and he'll need time. Um, we lost, like with the loss of Sid in quotation marks, you know, we've brought in a, a couple of other players to supplement the group. Um, and yeah, Luke's going to be integral, integral as will a lot of other players in and around that front line. Like we've got to score goals, obviously. I think there's... Um, yeah defensively we've made we've strengthened in areas you know it's uh honestly i am excited to see this group of players play in this division because i think they're all capable does that make sense like Absolutely, regardless yeah. of position or uh, age or experience uh, i think that they'll you know they will all have they'll, they'll all get an opportunity to play in a division that they didn't last year against new teams against new people and test themselves at a higher level and that's um you know that's that's what we're all here for that's why we're you know that's what we're why me and Simo wanted to sort of come back in as soon as we were told because we knew that the group you know a lot of them would have well majority of them had offers from higher and um yeah I think they'll they'll all be able to test themselves at this level this season and yeah, let's uh, see how it, see where it takes us. You know, mm -hmm. definitely. So, what what constitutes success for you this season then? Because uh, you know, higher level, uh, higher sort of uh, 
quality of opposition and yeah, uh, yeah. you know you've spoken about finishing top half of the table pretty much every time you've been that i think that would be a phenomenal achievement if you managed it but is that where you're aiming or is it um is what constitutes success oh, a good look if we can this year we'd i'd love a, i'd love for us to just get round get through to the next round of the fa cup i'd love for us to get through to the next round of the fa vars and see where those competitions take us um i think Success for us this year isn't just results and the league standings. It's can we test ourselves and be, I mean, to, to put perspective on it, last year we played against Marlow in the Barks and Bucks and we took them to penalties and we lost. Now, that's as a result, that goes down as a loss. But in terms of the experience for, you know, there was a couple of lads in that team, um, Louis Newart, who was 16, uh, Ollie Graham, who was 17, 18. Luke Hayden played in that side. Like There were players that played in that team that also played in a step seven side for us. Um, and it's those experiences. If we can come out of those, the, you know, the majority of our games this season feeling the way we did about that Marlowe game, where we're, we're, in, we're competitive, win, lose or draw, and we can play the way we, you know, that was the exciting thing about that Marlow game is we knew nothing about Marlow. We had to go and watch them. We had to go and do a bit of analysis. We had to go and implement that during a coach, you know, a, a training session before um, and set up in a way that where we were going to get a result. And majority of the last three years, we've known against the opposition we've come up against. Whereas this year, we know very little. I mean, I've gone to see a couple of pre-season games, but they're pre-season games, you know, like you see a lot of trialists and a lot of like, um, you know, messy games because you're playing on park pitches and, um, you know, there's lots of stuff to learn about the teams that we are going to play against this year. Um, and like I say, if we can come out of the majority of those games at step five, feeling the way we did after that Marlow game, like that constitutes success for me. Um, it's, again, it sounds a bit cliche and a bit uh, like I'm dodging, I'm swerving the, swerving the question, but uh, I hope you understand it regardless. Yeah, definitely. No, uh, you know, it sort of ties in nicely with your uh, answer about progress earlier, you know, sort of stepping on and stepping on a little bit, adding more to the club each year and, uh, you know, testing yourself at a higher level and still being able to compete, I think is a, um, is a, uh, you know, perfectly fine answer. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've got one more, Dan, if you're, uh, if you have any more. No, I was just, I was just going to say um, you're talking about, Obviously, looking for a good run in the cups, the Vars, uh, on, obviously, on the FA Cup on Sunday. Yeah. How much experience and kind of confidence can you draw from that first FA Vars run you had um, in the 2021 22 season? Just looking at the yeah. results you had there, you three of those teams uh, that, that you beat there were all of a higher level than you at the time. Yeah. Um, so there's yeah. obviously a lot you can draw from that a lot of confidence within not just the ability of the team, but the character as well to kind of overcome that underdog feeling that people yeah. may have. Yeah. And that is a factor, right? Like I think, and I, I, I'm hoping that we, when we go into the le these league games, that we have that same experience mm -hmm. that we had in that FA Vars run where these teams sort of underestimate us a little bit. You know, that's a nice, that's a nice, weapon to have in your ammo that you know they they see us as a club coming up from the division below and you know a lot of our players will be a little bit younger like we've got a young squad um we've we've the players that we've brought in a lot of them are you know under the age of 20 um with a goal to you know developing them and and sort of growing the the side almost like seamlessly i think we can pull on the excitement to be honest with you like i think the enthusiasm that our group will have for the FA Cup and for the season ahead uh, should be enough to get us through and to to put us in a position where um, you know we're comfortable. I think it gets underestimated. Like it sounds ridiculous, but a bit a bit of a novelty fact, <laughs> a bit of a novelty factor will will help us um, to to sort of play in those games and to experience things that you know. On, honestly, I for me, for example, when the the list of play of teams came through in the FA Cup this year. Arsenal were on page one with 
Bath County. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, that's for me. That I, I, again, really corny. Like I was like choked up because I was like, this is this is exactly what we would have dreamed of as a you know going in at step seven. Mm. Um, and don't get me wrong, like a lot of the players from that from that team from that team that came up with us at step seven, they've all gone on to do different things or. You know, some of them have had a break and come back, and some of them, you know, we've still got two or three in and around the squad now. But um, you know, they they'll have experienced quite a lot with us over the years, and we're hopefully going to be able to give them new experiences this season. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. And how far do you think uh, Barks County can go in a more general terms? Because you mentioned they haven't yet got a uh, a base. Yeah, is that something that's being worked on behind the scenes? Yeah. And- it- yeah, it's a, it's obviously a really, really tough, um, you know, tough situation to be in, and that we're not the only club in the area to to yeah, feel of the pinch of of that. Like, um, I obviously won't be, I can't like tell you exact, but I know that the club have spoken to developers and um, people from local councils and stuff like that to to start that get the ball rolling. Uh, equally, all of that was tied up with COVID as well, you know. Mm-hmm. So there was lots of like promise of x y and z happening and then you had covid then you had like a a semi-recession do you know what i mean like it's it's, there's lots and lots of factors at play when you know you you look at your own ground and um there are there are pros and cons to it like we we ground share at ascot we have to do little to no maintenance we have to do you know little to no work on the ground and anything like that so you know you take away those costs equally there's obviously a cost to, to renting the ground um We'll take it as far as we can take it. Like when we were in the playoff final last year, someone said to Steve, who's one of the founding mem- like founding chair people of the club, um, someone said to him in the crowd that I think he, I think they said, oh, um, you know, you'd be quite glad not to go up, really. And <laughs> Steve was like, are you joking? We'll just make it work. Like we've always made it work, and we'll always, you know, give it give it our best shot and the support that we've had from Steve and the club over the next, over the last five and a half years, you know, we haven't got the, you know, our own facility. Like we find that tough at times. Um, you know, it's, it's not always perfect. And I think, um, you know, I think we, but we, you know, you make the best of what you've got. Um, and yeah, in, as in terms of how far we can take it, I, I ask got a ground grade for step four, right? <laughs> so give us another three or four years and we'll get there right <laughs> that's, the, that's the ambition now is it yeah you said you ticked think... at the beginning you said step five uh with this club when you came in and you've ticked that yeah. or you will have ticked that off in uh, you know a week's yeah. time or whatever step um, four and the fa cup yeah great <laughs> <laughs> first round yeah yeah exactly exactly brilliant no thanks for joining us and, and sharing your thoughts on the season and, and obviously good luck on sunday i'm sure Everyone uh, connected to Berkshire football will be supporting you and, and hoping you can progress even further in the next round. Cheers, guys. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.